Well, hello and welcome back. We're continuing our tutorial series with MySQL, our for, focus really on SQL, although we're you know, using MySQL and MariaDB as our examples. Today, we are going to look at signal and resignal. We're sort of continuing our exceptions and error handling portion of this, and we are getting into a couple other ways that we can we can work with them. The first thing we're going to work with is we're going to walk through is called signal. Now the uh, syntax for signal is actually pretty straightforward, and it is you're going to do signal SQL state, and you're going to give it a number, and then most likely you're going to want to give it message text as well, otherwise it's not very useful. So you're going to give some sort of error, and this is where you want to raise some error that you you want to throw out to the user. So actually, let me change this. What I'm going to do here is in this procedure, uh, let me just clean this up a little bit. So it's a little bit, let's put that in the same row. And uh, what we're going to do is create this thing called raise signal, and we're going to give it a value. And right now we're just going to make it really simple. If the value is not equal to one, then it's going to say that does not exist. But instead of that, we're going to say, oops, that is not a one. And we're going to go with that. Oh, I hate when I do that. So I'm going to take this and throw it over in my current because it, so I can do that. And then if I jump into here and do source current.sql, oh, or exist because I need to do create or replace. And let me fix that here just so you can see it because I was playing around with this earlier. So that's already there. So now we come here Now if we source, okay, he's good. So if I call raise signal, whoops, if I spell it right with a one, then nothing happens. If I call it with a zero, oops, that's not a one and it gives me that error code. And so if we're looking here and look at, you know, basically it's a if, so there's nothing there. So if the value is not equal to one, then it's going to give me this message. Otherwise it does nothing. Oh, let's just do this. Let's do a uh, select uh, end of program. Just to show you how this goes. Didn't want to do that, but I do want to do this. Oh, let's go over here Just to update my current. And now, if I source it, now if I call it with a zero, oops, that is not one. If I call it with a one, I get in a program. So you can see here that in this case, what happens is when I do that raise. I'm sorry, that signal. Um, when I signal, it does not give me end of program. It just says, oops, that's not a one. So signal bails out. It essentially raises an exception, uh, which is this number. And I can do, let's call it one, two, three. And let's go, whoop, where was my current? Let's change that to like one, two, three. And let's uh, source signal with those zero one still works fine. If I signal with zero, then we can see that's my return code. Now the error is it's a specific error uh, because we've raised this as something that SQL is going to give you, but because it gives you that ID. Oops, so here it's a little bigger to see uh, because of the state it's going to return that number. So if you want to have a custom error code and a message, then you can use signal in order to do so. Now, there are situations where that could be a problem. You don't want to signal and have something happen while you're dealing with raising your exception. That gives you, that's where resignal comes in. So in the resignal example, 
for this one, we're going to have a numerator and a denominator. We're going to do a division. And what we're going to do is we're going to say if we see division by zero, then that's for if we hit this SQL state. And we're going to declare our handler, which we've seen before. So this is going to be a continue handler. And we're going to set uh, here within this re-signal, we're going to set our uh, message. And the problem here is, is that when I come in here, uh, if denominator equals zero, and I do a signal division by zero, then if I want to do anything within it, I have to essentially send it back up. Otherwise, it's going it to cause some issues. Um, and that's why here I'm going to get a signal, but I also want to continue it. So I'm, uh, the flow is it's going to catch an error. And within that error, there is an exception but I'm basically capturing that exception. And so I need to re-signal, which means I need to pass that back up the chain. So rather than just bailing out completely, because this is a continue, um, and because I need to, I want to catch that exception. You know, if you think of like a try catch, I want to catch that exception and then pass it up the chain, then I'm going to use a re-signal instead. So in this case, uh, Let's see what, oh, I need to take this. Let's make sure I get the whole thing. And throw that into my current. And then run that. Uh, results, oops, what did I do? Oh, I'm sorry, in line four. What did I do here? Uh, oh, declare results, and this is just going to be an int. Okay. I can change that. My mistake, missed one in there. Oh, I need to do my create or replace. There we go. So now I want to call it as a resignal example with two numbers. So call resignal example. And let's just do it uh, two and one. How is that? Let's see, numerator or denominator. Okay. So this should give us two over one. Results two. If we swap those two, it should give us a half. Uh, oh, it's giving us an int out. My mistake. That should be a float. Now if we run current. There we go. And let's go back to the one we call it 2-1. And it's 2. So we're okay there. So we can, you know, if we want to do, I don't know, some number, comma, some smaller number. Okay, so we're going to get our result. So that's working. However... Let's put, uh, let's start with a zero on the numerator, and that's zero, that's fine. But now if we do three comma zero, bam, now we're getting the denominator cannot be zero. So we have uh, in this, oops, that's where I need to look at it. So what we did is we came in here and we said, hey, I want to change the text. Uh, if otherwise, Let's see, if I get rid of that, oh, can't do it here. If I get rid of that here and get rid of my signal, when I run it, uh, let's see, current, then it's getting caught, it's basically getting just lost because I'm not passing it back up. And so, uh, this continue just says, nope, I'm not going to do anything with it. Now, if we do, uh, let's do this. Uh, let's do let's see what happens if we do select result regardless. In this case, we do source 
So we get denominator, it cannot be zero, it bails out. If we do it with a one, then it's gonna come through and give us our result. So we're still getting uh, here, because it's a signal it was bailing out before. Um, so with this signal, we are rewriting the text. If we don't, if we don't do it, let's see, remember, if we don't do it, because this is a continue handler, it just eats that example or that. There we go. Oh, sorry. Re it eats that exception. So it's going to come right through because it's a continue handler. Now I could say, uh, if I just wanted to say signal, then I'm going to get here. Uh, ch -ch 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 Did I get that right? Oh. Then it's going to give me an issue because. Oh, that's okay. Because it's expecting that signal. That signal is always being triggered. And so it doesn't like that. So it's basically, we're now just running into a uh, syntax error. If we resignal, then we're okay. And this is something we can play around with a little bit uh, as far as raising our exceptions and dealing with them. But it's, it's really, to, and we'll see some more of this as we get deeper into uh, some rather complex stored procedures. But this gives us a start so that we can, you know, now between our prior uh, conversation when we talked about exceptions in general and some of the handlers, whether it was a continue handler or an exit handler, now we have the ability to also uh, signal specific errors, which goes back to here. Uh, let's see. So we can do uh, exit handlers for specific um, or continue handlers for specific errors. Oh, if I can bring that up. And so, oh, actually, I'll bring it over here, which is easier to read. Where is that? There you go. Here, then we can create our own. Um, and we can set our signal state to a specific spot. We can start playing around with that as well. So we can utilize and uh, back, basically... Uh, enhance or add to, or even, mod I mean, just, I guess, generally modify the exception flow. Uh, we can use what's built in, but we can also change the messages. We can capture one, do some work, and then continue on, or capture it, do some work, and then bail out. So it gives us, uh, with these, this in the prior episode, we now have some tools to do very full feature exception handling. Which again, maybe it's not that big a deal with the initial couple of store procedures we've seen, but fairly quickly you'll see when you get into building out store procedures that there are going to be situations where you're going to want to bail out, where you're going to say, hey, I'm, I'm working on records that don't exist, or I'm spinning through a list of IDs and I'm looking things up based on that. And if one doesn't exist somewhere, then there's going to be an issue. Uh, it's... Actually, it could be, for example, a way to encode do some sort of a foreign key relationship as opposed to doing it within using the indexes and the keys. Not sure why you would do that, but there are situations, I think, where you would have something that is, uh, depending on how tricky you want to get it, where you're, you're wanting to do some sort of logic based on whether an ID exists or not. And it's not really a foreign key because you're not forcing it to exist, but you do want the ability to handle that. Um, you want to have, you know, maybe the case, for example, maybe you have a case where if the foreign key doesn't exist, then you create that record. Um, you go in, create it, link it up, and then go from there. So there's, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of just throwing ideas out at this point because once you get into exceptions, you're usually outside of, you're dealing with outliers anyways. Uh, even though they may be somewhat common, I guess, outliers, which would make it a little different, but you're basically saying, hey, 
here's a couple of things that can happen. I want to be able to handle those conditions as opposed to just, you know, crashing or quietly doing nothing. And then the user has to figure out what's going on. The caller of that store procedure has to figure out what's going on. This was a little short, but we've gone along the last couple of times. So I figure we'll, we're due one. And we will come back next time. We're just going to continue cranking our way through uh, SQL and, and learning how to use it better. But go out there and have yourself a great day, a great week, and we will talk to you next time.